Oh, wow. Okay, so that was a big introduction. Didn't quite remember that happening. But anyway, this is the uh, demo disc that came with the PlayStation that I got in 1997. So, this was my first introduction into actually playing the PlayStation 1. And, well, I played this thing because, of course, games are expensive, or at least were expensive, especially for a kid. And I wasn't exactly flush with cash. So, this demo disc, along with the game DEFCON 5, which I, I guess I'll put a link in the description to so you can check out what that's all about, were the two things that I had to play with the PlayStation for, like, the first eight months of me having the damn thing. So... Let's take a look at what we have here. We have a bunch of games here. Not all of these, if I remember correctly, are playable. So, let's get into this. Ridge Racer Revolution. Jeez, couldn't they just put an image in there instead of a 3D model of a controller? Alright, let's do this. Oh, that's right. They, they hid the loading screens behind minigames, and I think Namco actually had a patent on that for a number of years. And other, uh, and other game companies couldn't, couldn't do that. And now I guess, I mean, loading times are sort of going to become obsolete, because, uh, next generation of consoles or so are going to reduce loading times quite significantly. I wonder if it's a rendering error. Oh my god. Rendering error with the emulator that I'm using. That all of these seams between the environment are visible. Or if it the actual original game looked like this. Ridge Racer Revolution, I... Th you know, I can't remember if Revolution was the first game in the series. I know Ridge Racer... There was a game called Ridge Racer, just Ridge Racer, that was released later, but I don't know if that was just a re-release of the same game. And I feel like this game might have been re-released on the PS1 a few years later, with like an increase in uh, frame rate or something like that. Air Combat, oh, the Ace Combat series, that was the first game in the Ace Combat series. Did Namco make that? Well, oh man, I am bad at this. I remember I was, when I was, when I had this before, I was able to win these races. <laughs> I'm like seventh position here. <laughs> yeah, I lost. All right, moving on. Oh. Crash Bandicoot. Not 1996. You know, this is probably the demo that I played more than any other one. Man, this game looks amazing, considering it's a fairly early PlayStation 1 game. Naughty Dog can really pull off some amazing shit. <laughs> I guess the problem comes with um, the fact that Crash moves side to side, but the perspective of the camera doesn't shift from side to side, which makes platforming tricky. I believe that was some kind of a technical limitation, though. They weren't able to move the camera from side to side and be able to avoid... I'm, I guess, because we're not seeing a lot of texture warping, texture perspective um, warping, that maybe it might have been done and uh, they lock the perspective of the camera because they... I, I didn't really need those, I guess. They lock the perspective of the camera so you could um, you never observe the perspective of anything by something unusual so that way the textures don't warp when changing the viewpoint but it makes gameplay more difficult 
You know, I never played Crash 3. I hear Crash 3 was really good. And I wonder if Crash 3 managed to solve that problem. Oh. Used to be able to pull that off. <laughs> there we go. I guess getting all of these weird guavas or whatever the fuck we're dealing with here, these fruits, are uh, unnecessary for a demo run-through. Save point, 0% complete. Oh my god, look at the design of this character. <laughs> Crash's design is actually pretty good here. Clear designed the character around the limitations of the machine. So he's got a pretty clean design to him, which is something that I'd say the PS1 tended to lack was clean design, because it, I mean, if you look at the, comp the differences between, say, the PlayStation 1 and the N64, which were contemporaries, you had the N64, oh shit, <laughs> you had the N64, which wasn't really capable of doing much in the way of texture work, but they could make uh, clean, cleaner looking models, so that's what they did there. PlayStation 1 couldn't really do the clean looking models, but it had higher resolution texture maps, so they tended to do that, which made the characters look kind of messy. This seems to have taken a different approach. The texture work is pretty good. Now I have to you know, I'm, I don't know. I think I have a, uh, a filter maybe applied over for, like, trilinear texture mapping or something like that. But the textures look pretty good on the environment. Crash doesn't have much in the way of texture maps on him. But anyway, it's an unusual design for the PS1, but it looks like it worked pretty good. Also, the... The animations, they seem like they're using vertex animations, like separating the model into multiple polygons and then manipulating them around using the normal bones. NFL your series was like they're a game breaker too. Oh, okay. Said uh ninety seven. C double A. Oh, it's a loading screen. I thought I had to press something to get through. Oh, God. <laughs> hey. I'm gonna suck. Oh, fucked it up. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna... Oh, I only have two minutes. <laughs> what the f... Oh my god. <laughs> Okay, don't press the R1 button, because I passed it to nobody. <laughs> you know, I wonder what the... Uh, if I could compare this to, say, an SNES football game, because a lot of the design seems to be very much something which, uh, whoops, <laughs> seems to be very much based around something that could have been done on, like, the SNES. I mean, the only thing that I'm seeing that's really making a 
touchdown? Are you, are you kidding me? The only thing that really seems like it... <laughs> I'm way out of it. Is he fighting? Can I fight? The only thing that seems like it something that couldn't have been done on the SNES is the 3D environment in the backgrounds, like the stands. All right, here's my chance to shine. Oh, oh, oh no, 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 no! Oh. <laughs> because I'm looking at these, I'm looking at these um, character models, and they're all just 2D sprites, low resolution ones at that. Now the the PS1 wasn't particularly well known for high resolution character sprites, so. How do I direct the pass? <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. I don't have much... I'm not giving myself much of a chance of winning here. <laughs> I know the event, the later games in the PS1, like, I think Blitz might have... If I'm remembering correctly, Blitz had... 3D character models for the players. Although I might be remembering that wrong. But that sort of, like, was when football finally started to make sense on the PlayStation 1. I think with Blitz. Anyway, moving on. Oh, wait, missed one. Blast Chamber. I don't know remember being any good <laughs> but it was one that I had told myself that if I ever ran across it in like a like a fun kill land or something I and I just get it for like four dollars or whatever I would oh I have a choice of a choice of uh, press X to load really <laughs> if I could get it for four dollars I'd pick it up never did. <laughs> In fact, I don't know. As far as I know, this game was never even released. Because I've never seen it. I've never heard anybody talk about it. Oh my god, it controls like shit. Oh, I only have two minutes. I better stop fucking around. Oh! Okay. <laughs> too bad. Yes. Yes, too bad. Um, uh, this isn't first levels or until I die. I'm going to try this again. Besides, it's my channel. I make the rules. Run, fool! <laughs> oh, I can step on this fan. And that brings me up there. See, here's the problem. The, the perspective of the character is kind of s terrible. <laughs> oh, shit. Look at this. I can change the uh, angle of everything. So if I go up this way, I can run over here. Oh, shit. And he's dead. Okay, you know what? One. Try this other level. Oh, there's four people here. Oh, was this a multiplayer game? Knocked them over. Do I punch these guys? This guy's way bigger than me. I don't know how to do anything in this. I swear I knew how to play this when I was a kid. Oh, I can knock the dude over. It's like a tackle. I'm pressing all the buttons. Oh, I can move the camera around a little bit using the shoulder buttons. Oh, I blew one of them up. Ah, oh, the guy's gonna... Oh, they're farting. They're farting. Five, four, three, two, one, and they died. Yeah, 
Okay, if I were... This must be chaotic with four people playing it at once. You'd need a multi-tab, though, wouldn't you? Oh, look at that. Each character has a color. Okay, I'm seeing what's happening now. Each character has a color. And you have the different color blocks on the floor. So then you pick up these little shiny things. So, like, okay, so that's blue up there. I go and I place this on blue. And now I have, I guess, maybe a point against blue. Okay, okay, there you go. Blue, blue up. So now if I go over here, I can pick up the green thing. Yellow's about to blow anyway, so I'm gonna... I'm gonna drop it on red. Okay, we're on the green square. So I'm gonna throw one on my own. <laughs> You know, that seems like a bad idea. I guess once you land a crystal on their, their block, they have a certain amount of time to... Okay, he just exploded right away. It must be chaotic with four players running around. Uh, flipping the walls around. Blowing shit up. Oh, nope, he picked up the stone, because it just landed on him. I guess that's the end of the game, then, because, oh, you can drop it off of him. Bye-bye, Blue. Well, the time, <laughs> the timer is getting shorter and shorter. It's not even counting down. Just, one, goodbye. <laughs> it's like a big, fuck you. <laughs> that's an interesting, and this has been much fun to play. I guess if you had four players, then I guess to multi-tap, because this is a PS1 game, it would be kind of fun as a party game. Too extreme. I wonder, was there an extreme before it? Because there was two extreme, and then there was a three extreme. You never played three extreme, but I imagine it was trash. What was the... This is trash. <laughs> this game is trash. Look at this. Early early PlayStation 1 game, or a fairly early PlayStation 1 game. So this is before developers really had a good handle on the system. So we have this flat environment and sprites as characters and sprites as obstacles. It's goofy as hell. I can't remember the name. There was a game for... Uh, I gotta learn how to jump. There we go. There was a game for the PlayStation 1. As well as an N64 game. As well as an N64 game that was... Like, really managed to establish what a good snowboarding game was. It wasn't, um, was it Cool Borders? Cool Borders might have been the N64 game. It turns for you, that's weird. It's like, look, I'm not even turning, it's just doing that. Although it does run me into the wall. Although it's not quite the same thing, I guess the ultimate example of the extreme sports kind of game for the PlayStation 1 was probably Tony Hawk. This is definitely... I mean, I can definitely see why people, when they... Especially when the N64 came out, and you saw what the N64 was doing, and you would compare it to what Sony could pull off with the PS1, and you're looking at this kind of shit. <laughs> People would definitely get the perspective that the N64 was just end-all, be-all, the greatest damn thing in the world, and PlayStation 1 was just a piece of trash. But this is... <laughs> and yeah, this is definitely an example of how that might be true. But it's not, uh, it's not how things ended up being the entire generation. Games did get better than this. I just, I'm just hoping this ends soon so I can move on. I know I played this damn game a bunch of times. The demo, anyway. 
Last place. <laughs> Yay. But I didn't even think it was good back then. NHL Face Off 97. Sony produced this, huh? Yeah, fuck that up. God, I can't even see me. Oh, I just checked my own teammate. Oh, shit. I... <laughs> and... Oh, nope. <laughs> Can I switch players? I'm actually doing better than I was in that football game. Damn it. <laughs> I'm still going to lose. Come on. Oh. Great job, goalie. <laughs> What the hell is that? <laughs> Get in the place. Come on, goalie, don't let me down. Oh, there we go. Oh, shit. <laughs> Aha. Who the hell are you passing to? <laughs> Frick. <laughs> Come on, goalie, don't let me down. Yeah, goalie. Goalie's gonna take care of it. <laughs> that was stupid. I have five and a five point one seconds left. I don't think I'm gonna win. Okay, now we're getting into the good shit. Tekken two. Tekken one. Oh man, okay. That loaded in. Tekken 2 was the... Well, I, I don't know. Not the first... Not the first uh, 3D fighter. Uh, Junin Lee. No, nah, okay. Round one. Fight. Fighting games at the time were hard. I think they're a lot easier nowadays. Oh, although I am... Not doing good here. I thought I might actually be able to do this. Man, look at the... They didn't... You think they could have flat... Uh, shaded these things a little better. Oh. <laughs> Telegraph the hell out of that, but still hit me. <laughs> if I remember correctly, this demo actually does have all of the, uh, does actually have maybe all of the, oh, I gotta fight her again, but you can only play as these two. See, I'm getting the hang of it. I guess Virtua Fighter would have been the first 3D fighter. But it's the first one that I'd gotten a chance to play. 
and I think I'd actually played it before I got this demo. It was one of the things that I had seen up on a PlayStation 1. And I'm like, oh, that's awesome. I gotta try that. And I remember it being hard as fucking nuts. Trying to uh, get through, like, Angel and Devil and stuff. He's drunk. Is there anybody else? Ah, hey, I Round one. Fight. The uh, modern Tekken games play surprisingly similar to this. Much more refined, but the idea seems to be the same. Control scheme is largely the same. It's just less clunky now, and I think the... I think it runs a little faster. <laughs> Alright, that's enough of this. How do I... How do we get out of this? I pressed select to get out of everything before. Oh, is this two player? I didn't have two controllers at the time that I had this that I played this demo disc. So I don't know if this is two player or not. Round one. Fight. Oh, they're wearing different costumes. Look at that. Did I get at it? I think I did. Okay, it was an L2, which is something I did actually try earlier, but didn't work. <laughs> Formula One. Sinosis developed this. Mad Cats. Mad Cats made peripherals. Maybe they made like a steering wheel for this. To so death. There's a logo on the bottom left. I don't recognize that. Dolby Surround. PlayStation wouldn't support that? Nope, I should have paid attention to the control scheme. Is there a different perspective I can view? Huh. Why is all the audio coming from the left channel? Oh, wait, no. My headphones were just a little fucked up. I am not very good at sim racers. Or games in general. So forgive me for getting my ass kicked in this race. I have to find the brake. <laughs> Oh, I remember that. I remember being so impressed that they put a little detail like when you run over the dirt. Like, I'm going to do it here. Watch this. Run over dirt, you actually get some dirt on your tire that wears off. Look at that. It's on the tire. And then it wears off as you drive on. For some reason, when I was a kid, I thought that was some real shit there. I guess for what this is and when this came out, it doesn't look bad. I mean, also remember, I, I'm i not the, um, the emulator I'm using. EPSXE 2.0.5, I think is the version I'm using, is rendering the game at a higher resolution. So if I were looking at this at the low, like, uh, 320 by 240 that the game was originally running at. Perhaps it would be uglier. I'm going to upload this video at a 640 by 480 so you'll see it at twice the resolution than that the game was originally supposed to be. But I guess I should try playing this, just taking a look at this stuff at its original resolution to get more of an idea of what it actually looked like. But it looks pretty good from... 
Well, that's how I view change view. <laughs> Might I actually overtake someone? Yes! I'm gonna chariot the hell out of this. Do as the Romans do, motherfucker. <laughs> Soundtrack is not quite what I would have expected for a game like this. Formula One, oh, we actually have a full race here, multiple laps. Formula One was always a little more exciting to me than in the U.S. There seems to be this obsession with NASCAR. NASCAR is, I don't know, the, the racing is just inherently less exciting for me because there are fewer turns. It comes across as being like there's a very specific thing you have to do to win, and everybody's just trying to do that very specific thing, stay in this line draft behind someone like this, all that kind of shit. Not that I watch Formula One. I'm just saying I prefer it over something like NASCAR. Drag racing is something I'll occasionally watch. There's a, there's a track not that far from where I live that I occasionally go to. But it's, not, it's another thing that I can't really stand to do very often. Especially since drag racing is only about a quarter mile. It's only a quarter mile, so... The races tend to end real quick. Oh! That's gotta be cheating, right? <laughs> this is 1997, so this predated the... DualShock controller, so there's no there's no analog control for any of this stuff. Bizarre Christians, I'll have to look that up for any of these games. So I'm using a D-pad, which is a little bit weird to me. I'm not quite used to that. Shift, shift, clutch. Oh my god, I gotta use a clutch? Hey, the loading bar is actually going backwards. <laughs> Rally cross. This game is hard as balls, if I remember. Oh my god. <laughs> Okay, I'm not even going to bother working the clutch. I'm just going to... I'm not going to bother work... Why am I turning... I'm not going to bother working the clutch. I'm just going to hard shift. So apparently, I can do that. Now, this is a very different kind of racing. On one hand, it would seem much more exciting than the Formula One that... Because... The environment isn't flat. In fact, there's actually a surprising amount of detail in this racing map here. Am I about to be lapped? <laughs> oh, look at that. Damage the front of the car. I mean, the environment is not flat. I'm going up and down hills. There are rock walls there. Man, that's some tough flags right there. Oh, no, you don't, motherfucker. Oh, wow. <laughs> I gotta shift. <laughs> I gotta shift in the reverse. Man, suspension on this is terrible. I lose control when I start hitting too many bumps. I do remember like, I was able to win races. Wait, hold on. 
it's I'm not shifting. It's working like an automatic. So why the hell are you making me shift? Whoa! Oh, man, this is, uh... It's an interesting game. Definitely ambitious for the PlayStation 1, or at least the PlayStation 1 this early in its existence. But I have to say, this is not fun. <laughs> oh, get over the finish line. <laughs> I don't think this is a game that I ever saw on the store shelves, either. And if I had seen it, it's definitely not one I would have. You go, I'm gonna get Rallycross. That game is awesome. I don't like the track design either. Like the functional functionality of the track design. There are too many like blind corners that you like you have to memorize the track to be any good at it. Man, it's so touchy. I keep turning right into the walls. Oh, I'm going to hit that tree. Oh, okay. <laughs> Alright, this is another one I'm just waiting to end. Why is it tracking up a hill? The damn car is dog tracking all the time. And I'm on a hill. And instead of running me down the hill, it's running me up the hill. <laughs> Doesn't matter which side. And so I know it'll turn left up here. So I gotta be prepared for that. I do see that they're doing some... Um, I mean, I don't know if what the specific technique they were using at the time is called. But I guess you'd call it MIP mapping now. Where... Since the entire environment is 3D... When we're far away from an object like a wall. A rock wall. I'll... I'll demonstrate in a minute. It has a low resolution texture. And then as you get closer to it, the quality of the texture increases. You're seeing it with a lot of the sprites. Look at those trees in the distance. As we get closer, they pop in. Okay, we lost view of it. But it gets more and more detail. Freaking pyramids everywhere. Okay, look at that, that texture in front of us. It popped in a little bit more detail. Now, I don't know, maybe it's streaming that off of the disc, and that's just how long it takes to get the textures into effect. Let's stop for a second and look at that right in front of us. Nope, texture didn't load in. But I get closer, and it does. So, yeah, it's based on how far away you are. I guess you'd call that mip mapping. Even I guess mip mapping isn't a very specific technology, more of just a technique or a concept. I'm not seeing anything in terms of level of detail, though. I'm not seeing an increase in geometry complexity as we're getting closer to things. And I crashed. <laughs> the other guy was still racing, even though he must have been finished by then. <laughs> yeah, I'm not buying this. Okay, NFL Game Day. So this was NCAA Game Breaker. This is NFL Game Day. Oh, it's just a video.
there were videos on this. Okay. Don Beebe with the return. First and ten on the 27 yard line. First down, Robert Brooks, 14-yard gain on the pass. With the tackle, second and eight. First down, Edgar Bennett. 19-yard gain on the pass. Incomplete pass. All right, I'm going to skip over that. Jet Moto, it's only a video, though. <laughs> okay, so Jet Moto was... I know this game got a lot of unfavorable comparisons to Wave Race 64, which I guess was a rough contemporary of the time. I don't think it was really a fair comparison, because although they're both racing games and people look at this and they think jet skis, the two games were pretty significantly different in the way they played and all that kind of stuff. And I feel like now somebody's going to want to put a hit out on me for saying this, but People tend to look at Jet Moto as being, oh, that was the trash game that was just a knockoff of Wave Race 64. Not only did I think that they were actually quite different, I think that Jet Moto was actually better than Wave Race 64. Where Wave Race was kind of infuriating the way it played and the way it controlled and all that kind of stuff. And the uh, track designs and all that kind of stuff were pretty simplistic and all that. I'd say that Jet Moto was the better game. And then they released Jet Moto 2 and 3. I never played 3, but I did ha I owned 1, I played 2, and never played 3. Oh, you're about to die, bro. <laughs> I think it comes down to track design. Although Jet Moto didn't look as good as Wave Race, the track design uh, made it more fun. Ah, Twisted Metal 2. You know what? I never played Twisted Metal 2. Or 3. Alright, I played... Uh, okay, the only two Twisted Metal games I think I played were 1, which I owned, which I'd gotten, like, uh, once, like, the Greatest Hits library thing started happening, where you can get games for, like, 20 bucks. Twisted Metal was one of the early games on that. So I got Twisted Metal 1, thought it was great. Twist Metal 2 was supposedly a lot better. I just never, never got it. Twist Metal 3, I don't know, I, I, I hear that was mixed. Then Twisted Metal Black for the PS2. I think that, yeah, that was a PS2 game. And it was an online game too. I played it online, well, there was an online version. I played the online version of Twisted Metal Black. I thought that game was good, but I just think the era of the car combat game is past. Kind of makes me wish I had <laughs> blow up the Mona Lisa. <laughs> Since two was supposed to be better than one, and I enjoyed one so much, it does kind of it's kind of a shame that I never oh, take out the uh, the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> kind of a shame that I never played too. And if I played it now, it'd be well past its prime and it would play like an old janky PS1 game, so I'm not even going to try. Look at the videos. They all look like they're Betamax. <laughs> I guess because it's a PlayStation. <laughs> and then Betamax is a Sony thing. They're using Betamax tapes. There was something else. Let's see if I can remember how to... Oh, there it is. You flip these things backwards and there's a code on the back. You enter those, and then it shows you something new.
Just, um, Bandicoot, Crash Bandicoot. Oh, well, that's code still. Oh, we have a trailer. Independence Day. Oh, shit. Anticipated film event, Independence Day utilizes stunningly realistic 3D flight simulation to allow players to fly the world's most sophisticated aircraft from F 18s to Soviet MiGs. Defend the Earth from the invading alien force. Independence Day, the battle begins. I remember reading reviews for this game saying it was bad. Oh, it's another trailer for um, Twisted Metal. My name is Calypso. Exactly one year ago on Christmas Eve, my Twisted Metal contest destroyed the City of Angels. Down below, life has come to a halt as survivors struggle to stay alive. Calypso! Calypso, what have you done? What have you done? With the city awash in flame, nothing left to destroy. I face a dilemma. Where will this year's Twisted Metal contest take place? Fourteen of the world's best combat drivers have already been chosen, ready to battle to the death in the hopes of becoming the victor and claiming whatever prize their brave hearts desire. But where will the contest be held? Oh, the world will be my battleground. Hong Kong, even Antarctica. There will be no safe zones this year, no places to hide. In the next 24 hours, the entire world will know my name. They will see my beautiful work of art firsthand. No one will be safe. I promise you that. Good luck, driver. Welcome to Twisted Metal. Now that I recall, there was a storyline behind Twisted Metal. Not a good one, but <laughs> there was something there. Hello! Hello! Ah, yeah. Are you the person who is in charge of the uh, Universal City Hall? Ah, good. This is the mad scientist, Baron Aloha, talking to you. Listen, Donka, I have question for little favor. Jumping Flash 2! I never played Jumping Flash or Jumping Flash 2. I don't know if there was a third one. I want to think that there wasn't. But it was, uh, from what I understand, it was an interesting idea of what a 3D platformer could end up being. Although it wasn't something that ended up catching on. Oh. I'm sure that I typed that in at some point. It didn't work. Was this Tune Racer? Motor Tune. 
a kart racer. You know, this is a game that I'd seen this, um, I'd seen this trailer for, but I never seen it on like a Fun Kill Land or a Walmart or a Target shelf or anything like that. I've never even heard of it really, other than this video. I should look this up. It seems like it might be one of them either just disappointing games from an era or like a forgotten gem that people just don't remember. But it was something that probably should have been much bigger than it was. Of course, I, I'm pulling all that out of my ass. I have no idea what this game is really like. Sort of like Jet Motor though, with surprising amount of detail in the environment and... I don't know, the track, the, the trailer, of course, is going to highlight the best parts, but the track design looks pretty cool. Racing at the time, I mean, you had, like, the Formula One games that, that I'd seen. You had the Ridge Racers. You had weird stuff like this. This is, I'd consider this to be, like, a kart racer, like, uh, like Mario Kart kind of thing, because it's kind of goofy, and you're throwing things at each other, it looks like. Am I forgetting anything there? No, oh, like, too extreme. That was a racer. Wow, that trailer just abruptly ended. It's the year 2073. War has broken out... Carnage Heart! Carnage Heart! ...the corporate conglomerate Draken over mining rights on three of Jupiter's moons. This is, okay, this was a game that I had wanted, though I couldn't ever find it. And I remember reading reviews on it that said that it was, it was, a, overkill engines, really. I remember reading reviews saying that it was a, a good game, but the customization of the mechs was overly complex and people had a hard time getting a grasp on it I um, mean I probably would have tried it if uh, if I ever could have found it and maybe I should try looking into it now although I'm not sure I'd have the patience to properly learn the game now Tobol number one. Another 3D fighter. This Tobol number two was a game, too, also. You know, this was a game that I had owned. I picked it up. <laughs> Ultimate of realism. <laughs> it had a... I justified buying this to myself by saying that it was like two games in one, because it had the 3D Fighter, which I didn't think was really very good. I played through it, I beat it with all the characters, because that's what you did back in the day. But, it wasn't very fun, but it had a sort of invent adventure mode, where you would play as the character, and you just sort of, like, go through a dungeon, and you'd fight these things. I don't remember what the hell you fought. Same enemy over and over again. And you'd pick up items and all that kind of stuff. And the adventure game wasn't very good either. But it was... Quest mode, quest mode that's what they called it. Yeah, look at this. Attack the dungeon. <laughs> I mean, I got it for like $10, so I'm not going to complain. I think I got it for $10. Mad Mouse. <laughs> I mean, for an adventure game, it had, like, the full-on fight fighting game engine, so it was a surprisingly deep fighter for an adventure game, but a surprisingly shallow adventure for an adventure game, so... It also came with a demo for Final Fantasy VII, which was a big selling point. I got it on a budget, don't, don't judge me. <laughs> Twisted Metal Code. Press X for hidden codes. Oh, there's the code. Swamp. Because it doesn't seem like it would play that well. Single Track was a developer. I wonder what happened to that. 
I know they they developed a lot of like the early PS1 gems like Twisted Metal, Jet Moto, Warhawk, stuff like that. Warhawk was awesome. Like, fuck you if you think Warhawk sucked. I'm talking about the PS1 game, not the PS3 game. But uh, single track, I know that the development of Twisted Metal was done by 989 later on. So I wonder if um, it just auto started. I didn't select on that. I wonder if 989 and single track were the same developer, just with a different name. But anyway, that's my first demo disc. This video has been nearly an hour long. Wow, is that much time passed? That's how long it took me to get through every demo. Huh. Surprising amount for a free product that was bundled in the box for the PlayStation 1. Spent a lot of time playing this as a kid. A lot of nostalgia coming back, even if I didn't quite remember everything that I saw. Anyway, if you stuck around this long, thanks for watching. Uh, I got a lot of demo discs over the years from the official PlayStation magazine that was released in the U.S. And I think I might, considering what a... Uh, what a nice walk down memory lane this game was, this video was. I might do some more of these. Anyway, thanks for watching and bye.